Hi Scrubs, I hope you're well. So we're back on horse reality. Now um, I have got too many horses at the minute. That's actually one of the problems that I kind of have. I've way too many stallions and mares and everything and I've started to try and sell off a couple of foals which I'm going to keep doing. Um, the other thing that I've been working towards at the moment is getting enough money now to sign up to one of these courses. I'm getting very close now. Um, I've managed to get over this point so now I'm trying to decide whether to continue on, go for the horse nutrition, or to save even more and go for veterinary sciences, and I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm sort of trying to figure out which I would prefer, so at some stage soon I should be able to actually start doing those courses. Now, the thing that I kind of want to focus on today is the colour genetics, so we're going to be going in here to the wiki. So we kind of touched on some of the colour genetics before, we're kind of going to go into this. Um, I don't know how much of it we'll get through today, but we'll try and get through some of it. So the first thing is, the horse coat colours and the hereditary in this game are based on real life horse colour genetics. Every breed is given a starting percentage for each colour based on the colours of the breed in real life. For example, the Moran's pony is nearly always both uh, black, both in the real world and in the game. The same can be said for Frisian horses, but did you know that some purebred chestnut Frisians, uh, but there are some purebred chestnut Frisians in the world, that originally come from pure black uh, Frisian parents. This is not impossible as the chestnut allele is on the same gene as the black allele, but the chestnut allele is recessive. It's only shown when two parents with a possibly hidden chestnut allele both pass on this allele. Chestnut can therefore stay hidden in a breed for a very long time. Chestnut is not the only colour that can surprise breeders. For example, the silver gene can remain hidden in a complete chestnut family and the seal brown allele can be masked by bay. There are more of these hidden colours and sometimes they appear in the game just like in real life. So when there are colours in a breed, we always come across the problem of acceptance. Many uh, breeds have colour restrictions. Some of these are fair. A shire horse with a cream gene must have had a non-shire horse in its pedigree. But as a cream can stay hidden behind a black coat, it can also remain unnoticed for uh, various generations. So if unwanted colours show up in a breed, there's a possibility the horse is not purebred, therefore some colours are forbidden. But some breeds have more impossible rules. A Carmelo New Forest Pony is not allowed, but a Palomino or a Buckskin is, with Palomino unwanted for stallions though. However, each of these colours, Carmelo, Palomino and Buckskin, and a few others as well, are caused by one single gene. One cream allele on a bay results in a Buckskin. One cream allele on a chestnut parent results in a Palomino. And two cream alleles, for example, when uh, Palominos or Buckskins are crossed, can result in, exa for example, a Carmelo. So eventually, when Palominos or Buckskins are accepted in a breed, uh, every once in a while, there will still be unwanted Carmelos and Perlinos and Smoky Creams. Only when breeding carefully can these colours be avoided. But why are they unwanted? If Palominos can be purebred, New Forest Ponies, why is Carmelo not wanted? Well, it's commonly believed that horses with a very light coat or light skin are more vulnerable to the hot sun or different weather conditions. For that reason, some colours are avoided. So then we have the lethal colours. So there's two colours in this game that can be lethal. And we did sort of touch on this, I think, quite a while ago. Um, I know I was discussing it in the comments with a couple of you guys in one of the previous Horse Reality videos. So there are two colours in the game that can be lethal. Um, are dominant white and frame. A horse with one allele of these genes is usually perfectly healthy and not restricted by its colour at all. You will not find adult horses with two of these alleles, however, as they die very long in the development or shortly after birth, there is no cure. The best known dangerous colour is um, frame. The disease is currently known as the lethal white syndrome. A horse with one frame allele shows a more horizontal white pattern across its body. It is healthy and can be very striking and gorgeous. It is mostly known for American paint horses and quarter horses, however if two horses with one frame allele are bred together there's a 25% chance the foal will have two frame alleles, and this will result in a white foal that unfortunately will die within a few days after birth. The cause is a genetic problem and cannot be healed. A horse with one frame allele also has this problem but will show no symptoms as the other allele is healthy. Only when two alleles come together does the foal die. Breeders must always pay attention and look for suitable breeding with a frame horse. So the other possible lethal colour is dominant white. White, white mutations or just dominant white is very rare and has been recorded as an instant mutation multiple times. It gives rise to white or partially white horses. Uh, the Francis Munt, uh, Teague horses and the Thoroughbreds are some well-known breeds with these colours. A horse with one allele of this gene is, for as far as we all can tell, completely healthy. It can therefore be safely bred to any horse with no well white allele at all, but two horses with a white allele could result in miscarriage. Exactly. Uh, which white alleles are no viable matches is not entirely clear to science. Owners of dominant white horses should be careful when breeding them. There has been speculation about a third possible lethal colour called Roan, or more precise, Classic Roan. At some point in history it was believed that Roan was homozygous lethal and would result in miscarriage. Nowadays the evidence for this is slim and the colour is completely viable in the game. 
At the moment, only Freya is lethal when homozygous, meaning a fool who has two alleles of the gene in the game. So be careful when you're trying to breed for this color. Do remember a horse that has just one alley is perfectly healthy and can compete in any sport just like the other. In fact, some people with these colors so uh, like these colors so much, they would be perfectly happy having a horse with either of these colors. So the next thing that we're going to sort of go into is the color guide. So we kind of touched on this a little bit um, whenever we were looking at the color of our foal and we were testing it. So if at any point you're like, I'm not really sure, you know, which um, genotype is for this, you can go in here and have a look. Now I'm not going to go through all of this because we'll be here, we'd be here quite a while, but you can go in here and have a look and see what would indicate um, for which color. So. So then if we go into the summary here, we can see the base colors, the dilutions, the modifiers, and the white patterns. So obviously we've got uh, black, chestnut bay, seal brown, and uh, wild bay in here for the base colors. Now one thing to just note is the extensions include black and chestnut, but a goodie includes bay, wild bay, and seal brown. Then we have the dilutions. So this is where we see champagne, cream, dawn, mushroom, pearl, and silver in there. Then we have the modifiers, which is grey, uh, pangre, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, flaxen and sooty. Uh, so these are modifier genes. Then we have the white patterns, um, so we can sort of see them more clearly down here, such as Tobiano, Sabino, Roan, Fram, Splashed White, another type of Splashed White, Rabicano and Appaloosa. Um, so that will give you kind of an overview. Obviously, if you click any of them, then you can go in and have a more specific look at each one. So while we're not going to go into each of these colors specifically right now, what we are going to do is we're going to have a look at the overall sort of look at each of them. So the base colors. So horses have several base colors which form the foundation of all other colors and they're created by two genes, extension and agouti. So extension is the cause of two separate pigments, red and black, and the second gene agouti describes where the black pigment, if any is present, is located on the body, so resulting in a combination of two colors, red and black. So the extension gene. So the extension gene is responsible for the pigment colors EU melanin, black, and uh, Pheo melanin, red. Uh, black is caused by the E allele, which is dominant, while red is formed by the E allele, which is recessive to black. So basically, when we were talking about recessive, um, like if we just go to one of my horses here, just for an example. So we're going to use we're going to use smoke screen for this example. So smoke screen here, as you can see, has got a black coat. Now we're going to ignore the white on him right now because that's not what we're worried about. He is showing white because he's got Tobiano, but um, he also does have cream. Um, but we're just going to ignore that for the moment. We just want to look at the extension up at the top here. So he is exhibiting black, right? And the reason that he's exhibiting the black coat is because he's got a dominant A. Okay, he's got an abdominal extension. He's also got a recessive one, but because it's recessive, it's not going to show up. Because if he had two small E's, he'd actually be chestnut. But because he's got a large E, he accepts black. Now he could have two large E's, which would also be exactly the same. Um, he would still be black. Um, but that's just to kind of explain that really, really quickly. So if we go back here, we can see uh, a black horse needs at least one copy of the E allele, which is responsible for the black pigment, E melanin. A common black horse is therefore black all over, including the coat, mane, tail, and other points. Due to diet, genetic, and environmental factors, black can sometimes appear sun bleached with red or other colored hairs coming through the coat. Now, we know that there needs to be at least one dominant for that. So if we go back to him, we can see that he obviously has that, and obviously that's why he has except it's the black coat. So the next thing is the chestnut. So a chestnut horse has nothing but red pigment from its legs to its ears. This pigment does not always appear as pure red, uh, but it can range from yellow to nearly black, uh, caused by both genetics as well as environmental factors which are not yet known. Then we have a goody. So a goody gene takes the black pigment and moves it across the body of the horse, resulting in patches where red pigment can reappear. It can therefore only work on black pigment and as a result needs at least one copy of the E allele to function. So bay. So the best known variation of a goody is a bay horse. Um, bay horses can have any shade from light to dark through. Dark variations may also be influenced by sooty. It is unknown whether bay phenotypes are genetically distinct or multiple variations caused by their factors. So if we just scroll down here. So this is kind of what this means. It shows black on the legs but the rest of the body is sort of this reddish color. So this is kind of what this this is talking about, the fact that it takes the black pigment and moves it across the body of the horse. So that's kind of what that is sort of explaining. So um, the next bit is wild bay. So wild bay or light bay is the least known, rarest version of bay and it separates itself from any other bay horse by its very short black points. 
Um, so you can see here there's very little uh, black there compared to here, for example. Um, in other goody horses, the black on the lower legs extends to the knee. In wild bay horses, the black does not get any higher than the socks. Uh, often the horse, often the coat, mane and tail are also lighter. It is possible wild bay is dominant over other uh, variations of bay, but it's not yet ascertained, so they don't know for sure. So then we have seal brown, which is this one here. And the term seal brown is horse colours is usually used if the horse is lighter than uh, black, but darker than bay. In the case of seal brown, the coat looks almost black with light coloured uh, flanks and muzzle. So obviously if you were looking at a seal brown horse, we'll just go in here, you can see that there's little light areas, and that's kind of how you could indicate whether that horse, because if you look at a black horse, okay, we're not seeing that, but if we look at this one, we can see just these little lighter points, so that's how you can kind of identify that. So the next thing is we'll look at dilutions. So dilutions, I love dilutions because that's where you get your palominos, your buckskins and things like that. So after the base colours, the dilutions are the best known uh, horse uh, coat colours. They are part of the modifier group but often shown separately due to their striking results and common behaviour. All dilutions alter, uh, which is lighten the entire coat and or the points, mane, tail, ear, tips, lower eggs of a horse. Some may also influence skin colour. Horses with the diluted colours have also been uh, despised and loved in history. In some cultures, the lighter colours were seen as a sign of weakness, while others praised the unique variations. In modern times, dilution seemed to be growing in popularity again. So cream. Cream is probably one of the best known and most popular dilutions when combined with base colour is responsible for palomino and cremalo on chestnut and buckskin on perlino on a bay. And the varieties smoky black and smoky cream on black. When combined with other dilutions like dun, new unique names like uh, dunskin, Dun and Buckskin, and Donalino, which is a Dun Palomino, are commonly used. So this dilution is incomplete um, dominant, meaning it has different results in heterozygous and homozygous states. In heterozygous states, it dilutes the red pigment of the coat to a yellow gold, and black pigment is unaffected. When two copies of the cream gene are present, the hairs of both the coats and the points become creamy white, so no matter the original pigment. So then we have pearl. So the cream gene has a second dilution attached pearl. Though probably very old, it was only recently identified and appears to be linked to the Iberian origin. Pearl behaves as an incomplete recessive. One copy of the allele brings about uh, such little difference, though experienced breeders claim they can see it. It is often dismissed. Uh, two copies result in a colour that is a little similar to a single cream dilution, but with a unique pearl sheen. So pearl also interacts with cream. When one copy of each is present, the horse's coat is diluted to a cream colour that is somewhere between a single cream dilute and a double. So then we have champagne. So the champagne dilution affects both red and black pigment. Red hair becomes gold, while black hair is diluted to a more chocolate brown, often described as the colour of a uh, Weimarian dog. I had a look for that dog, so that's approximately what that might show up like in a horse. Often a bright iridescent gives the coat a beautiful metallic look. The skin colour ranges from pink to lavender with dark freckles. Eyes are amber or hazel. Foals are born with blue eyes and a much darker coat colour which lightens quickly. The skin is more pink with freckles only appearing in abundance as they age. And homozygous horses are nearly impossible to distinguish from heterozygous horses. So then we have Dun. So Dun is probably one of the oldest dilutions as many suspect it to be the original horse coat colour. It dilutes both red and black pigments but leaves certain areas partially unaffected resulting in so-called primitive markings including a dorsal stripe, leg barring, shoulder and sometimes neck stripes or shadows, darker ear tips, frosting in the mane and tail and a dark uh, face mask, mottling on the upper leg, cobwebs on the forehead and brindling, and all of these have to be present at the same time. In addition, the coat is diluted to a slightly lighter, more dull colour, increasing the contrast with the darker markings. So then we have silver. So silver dilutes the mane and tail of black-based horses. It can also have an effect on the back of the lower leg, sometimes diluting it or creating diluted areas. The effect is usually more profound in younger horses as the mane and tail may darken as the horse ages, sometimes to the point where they appear almost undiluted. In foals, silver can be identified by striped hooves and white eyelashes, though these characteristics may disappear as the, foal as the horse ages, and both can also be caused by other colours, so presence in itself is not um, evidence for it. So that's just a really quick look at the base colours and the dilutions. Obviously we haven't looked through the modifiers and the white patterns yet, uh, but I just kind of wanted to touch on that and have a look. But um, I think like for anyone who is kind of struggling with it, definitely have a look through the wiki and I think one of the best things to actually do is to look at your mare and your stallion and especially what fold you get, compare the colours and patterns that you've got because that will kind of help you sort of figure out um, as you go along. 
Um, I think if you can kind of wrap your head around this part first before worrying so much about uh, the dilutions of the white powders, I think it's it's probably this bit here. If you can figure this bit, the agouti and the extension out, um, the rest will kind of follow from then on. Um, obviously some of them do work slightly different um, than that, but it's just I think the easiest way to get started with that, I think if you can sort of understand how you get a black horse, how you get a chestnut horse, how you get a bay horse and so forth, you can kind of go uh, from there because everything else kind of modifies on that. So I think that's a good way to sort of start with it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to try and figure out uh, what horses I'm going to keep, what ones I'm going to sell, because I have too many at the minute for the amount of stalls that I have, and I don't really want to have any more stalls, because the amount I have at the minute is quite a lot to manage. Um, so anyway, Scrubs, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a lovely day, and bye guys! <laughs>